Hey, welcome back to the Milton House Price Report. My name is Chuck Charlton with Royal Page Meadowtown, and we do this report every single month. And the whole idea is, wouldn't it be neat if I could actually sit down right beside you, walk through the report together? And we've got some really cool stuff to talk about this month. And when we talk about Milton, we do the urban and the rural areas in the report, although it tends to get skewed just by number of sales towards the, uh, the urban centers. Uh, our team consists of three licensed agents. We also have a full-time assistant, Jenna, and uh, we've got some really good things to offer buyers and sellers. Now, a word of caution in this report is that, you know, the stats can say oftentimes whatever you want them to say. And so more specifically, anytime people talk about the market, the Canadian market, the Milton market, you have to be very careful because the townhomes can be doing different things than the condos and even different neighborhoods can be doing different things so you really have to approach this with with uh, caution you'll get a general sense of how the market's doing with this report you get a general sense of what things are listed for but you really have to look at specifics and even if you looked at the sale prices for example you wouldn't get a sense of right now what's happening that's historical information so we have to be really clear that uh, an individual analysis is often the best case to really figure things out. Now, when we look at the graph, the, and we've been tracking this for the last eight or nine years, it's the average monthly selling price. And for a lot of these stats, what we do for the big stuff like this is we go for the, the whole Toronto Real Estate Board because the numbers are more reliable. And so we want to make sure that we're not going too big but not too small for a graph like this. So what we've seen is between January and February, a huge kick up in average price. For the first time ever, the Toronto Real Estate Board Average house price is over $500,000, and a lot of that is because people can borrow money at 3%, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. And you can see that there's generally a trend. March tends to be a pretty straight month, either a little up or down. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit up this month, and then we're going to see the spring market. How high is it going to go? Are we going to see 540 as an average sale price? I don't know, but usually what we see is through the April, May, June is we see the average price tends to go up. Now keep in mind that that's not always indicative of the entire market. Sometimes it's just more bigger homes do sell. So take it with uh, caution, but also recognize that there are trends of demand. And as a buyer, sometimes what you look at is the best deals can be had in August and December and January. Now you don't always have as much selection, okay? So so a lot of times people say to us, we're going to wait for the spring market. We're going to wait for the spring market. The problem is, is sometimes there's so much competition. And we've even seen at some points in the spring and fall where five of the same model, five crop side models will come out. And then it becomes very hard to differentiate yourself. And you hope that the market demand is going to scoop up all of them. So anyhow, I wanted to show you a little bit about the effects of interest rates and what they're doing. And so if I pulled out this slide, and we actually used this one from the Milton Buyer class. And so we talk about when one goes up, the other goes down. And this is basic market fundamentals. And so if we use this example of there's a house for 300000 there's a house for two sixty six, and a house for two thirty eight. And even if you imagine the market did that un under subsequent years, years, you'd find that's an 11% drop and a 21% drop in prices. Now, usually what, what makes that happen or what makes it go the other way, if we're reading this from, uh, from right to left, is the lower interest rates at 3%. When, when rates are so low, what we're seeing is that's what's really fueling this activity to go up. Now, if things change and the rates start going back up four, four and a half, five percent, my belief is that we've really stretched ourselves pretty thin and we're going to see some kind of an effect on prices. So anyhow, just to show you the effect on a monthly carrying cost, the monthly payment in all three of these examples is exactly the same. So a 1% increase in price, but an 11% drop in price is completely like they wash each other out. So it's almost a 10 to 1 ratio of the effect. So a small change in interest rates can have pretty substantial effects to house prices. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. The good news as a seller really is that 
as long as the rates stay low, we're probably going to see pretty good prices. The unfortunate part if you're buying another home is that it's going to be more expensive too. But that's okay because it's all relative. So then you go back and you say, what's important to me about moving? Uh, from a buying perspective, I guess, you know, a lot of people are, are waiting for the market to slow down. They think that buying a, a townhouse for 400000 is very expensive. But my answer to them usually is, look, do you want to pay it on a higher interest rate or a higher price? Because the, the number that stays constant is the monthly payment. How much down, how much per month? That's what most people are concerned about. And if you think about it, car companies, cell phone companies, they've all done that. They understand that, that that's what people want to know. And the truth is, is most people, their jobs are not giving them a 20% raise. So that monthly payment number is the one that stays constant and price and interest rate tend to kind of be like a seesaw where when one goes up, the other goes down. And uh, so anyway, so that's, that's our thoughts about where the market's going. If you ask me when rates are going up, I have no idea. I think there's still a lot of factors that uh, that that are are going to have to take place before we see the rates go up. I think there's a lot of uh, messed up stuff happening in the world, but at the same time, there's a lot of money that got thrown into the economy, and they're going to have to put the brakes on when things start really moving forward. So freehold townhomes, we look right across the board, semis detached. We see, we saw better numbers in February than in January. We saw higher. We saw more sales, so the number of sales went up. Days on the market went down. We look at percent of sales to new listings down a bit, but overall it's because there were just more listings that came out. Demand was met a little bit better. So we look at condo townhomes, condo apartments. The rural stuff started to really wake up. We started to see some sales through February, where December and January were a lot slower. And even look at the uh, the prices here at February uh, compared to January, the year-to-date stuff, much higher in February. So good stuff. And then there's a lot of people that have used our help from the report. So the, here's some words that uh, the people have said. And uh, I don't think history is a perfect indicator of what happens, but it's usually pretty reliable. So anyhow, read through that on your own. And then we've got a whole bunch of listings here. And we put these in mostly just to give people a sense of where things are at. Um, listing price and sale price do not relate at all. We've seen quite a few listings sell even for more than asking price this year. And uh, this is a neat little house here on Steels. It's for 177000 It's an old building. I think it was built probably before World War II. And, uh, but it's cheap. And there's already a tenant in there that's willing to stay. So if you got about 900 bucks for it, it actually could be a nice little starter investment property. And so anyhow... It's good to look at this stuff, but I, a lot of the, this stuff is selling for above, below. One thing for is for sure is if you get your home in move-in ready condition, then you're almost guaranteed to have a lot of demand. And so that brings us actually to the next steps that you can take. And uh, one of them is to actually go to the website, check out all the real sales. Uh, this is not like it, we don't put any barriers or restrictions on it. We show you everything that's sold. And so you just have to go check out the, uh, the website. And so here's what I want to just share with you. The things that you can do next is number one is you can do what we call a pinpoint price analysis. And it's where we actually recommend the price current as of today. And we look at the sales. We also look at your competition and we guarantee to sell it in as, at least 60 days. And oftentimes I can even guarantee to sell in 30 days or less. But we always try and relate price to time. There's always a number it'll sell in 24 hours. There's always a number it'll sell in two weeks. And so we try and kind of give people a sense of that. And the other thing is that if you, if things are selling so quickly, I see this a lot with townhomes, you don't price, if a guy sold in a day, you don't price at the same level as that guy. You price higher. You really try and push your limits, get as much money as possible from the sale. And so oftentimes my advice to people is be aggressive and, and aggressive in the sense like go a little higher, stretch for that extra money. You can often get it with the right strategy. Now, 
You can also sign up for a room by room review and I find that sometimes I'm just getting off a cold and I find it's hard to get those R's in. That We talk about things you should and shouldn't do and we try and categorize them as must do, could do and don't do so we can help you stay organized and give you, give you a vision for each room and the sooner you do that, the, the much more relaxed you're going to be when it comes time to sell. And the final thing is our silent market of homes. If you'd like to be profiled in our silent market, which means homes that aren't even for sale yet, we work with probably 20 or 30 buyers at a time, our team. We have about 8,000 people that watch our Milton Daily Homes videos. And so we get a ton of traffic, a lot of people telling us what they want. So oftentimes what we're doing is we've got this little sort of side thing where we, we match people up and we find people buyers before they're even listed. We find buyers homes before. It's just, it's a great thing. So if you want to kind of connect on that level, give us some information about your home and, uh, and we'll definitely try and find a match. So that's the video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, our phone number is 905-693-9346. You can reach out by email and have a great month. Uh, I'm going to try and keep you a little bit more posted with some of the buyers that we have and, uh, and you can kind of see where the demands at and some of the people that, uh, that may be a good fit if you or even one of your neighbors or friends is, uh, is looking to move. So anyhow, have a great month. We'll see you next month.